Today I'm going to talk about how you quarantine an aquatic pet invertebrate. I have quarantining videos for climbing and burrowing pet invertebrates and realized that the only class I believe I've, I've missed of invertebrates was those that are aquatic. So I'm going to cover that today. Um, as a review, if you haven't watched my other videos and you're new to this, you quarantine new pets that you get, especially before putting them into in with other animals that you've had. So in this case, if you get new fish or any kind of invertebrates, such as a snail, you want to add to your aquari existing aquarium, you always want to quarantine it separate from the others by itself for at least a month before putting it in with your other animals. You do this because Sometimes you buy a pet that looks healthy, you get it home, and two days later you realize it's sick or it's got parasites or you notice it has an open wound of some sort on it. And if this pet is sick and you didn't realize it and you put it in your existing aquarium, it could just run rampant throughout all of your fish and all of your other invertebrates and kill your entire aquarium if you don't catch it soon enough. So that is why you quarantine. Even if your pet is going to be kept by itself, it is, it is still a good idea to quarantine new pets in a very simple setup that makes it easy for you to be able to spot any kind of parasite or illness or wound and respond to it with appropriate treatment very quickly in the hopes of possibly saving your pet. And it also, uh, quarantining also allows you to make sure that your pet is finding its food. It is eating properly and you can observe its, its feces to make sure they're not bloody or yellow or any color they're not supposed to be in the right, the right consistency. So it has other uses too. So I'm gonna go over that today. First of all, in the aquarium setting, a few of the things that are most common that you're going to be looking for are parasites such as ick and velvet. Ick is, looks like little raised spots all over your, your pet as if somebody had poured salt onto it. And velvet is pretty hard to see without an overhead lamp or a light coming in from the side because it looks like this very, very fine powder which is a golden yellow or a rust colored and the treatments for both of those would be methylene blue which I found to work the best or Victorian green so it's going to be in it's going to be a blue bottle of liquid and um, ideally it's one drop every other day or so in a one gallon with a partial change um, every three to four days and then a full change of water once a week um, and these, it will stain your fingers blue, it'll stain anything you have in the aquarium blue, it may, it has even been known to stain the plastic of plastic aquariums blue. It is a stain which is used for staining slides in chemistry and biology, so it is a caustic substance. Be very careful not to overuse it or you will end up burning your pet and possibly killing it. Um, some other things you're going to want to look for are open open wounds. If your pet has open wounds, um, if they get open wounds from a fight in your existing terrarium, you can move them to a quarantine setup like this to treat them with an antibacterial such as Melifix. Uh, look for fuzzy, cottony, gross. This is usually fungus. Treat with Premifix. Also look for slime on the fish's body. Uh, or your invertebrates body for, for white slimy patches, uh, whitening of the eyes, um, developing hole in the head, which is called, actually called hole on the head disease. Um, if you got anything else, go see their pet store for appropriate treatments for that. Those are just some of the common. Also be aware of any kind of swimming problems, um, like a shrimp swimming upside down, if it's, you know, they're not an upside down shrimp or anything, you know, it's not normal for them. Um, swim bladder in fish, um, 
and that could be that they can't swim right, they're always tipping the side, it could be they swim up and they sink, it could be they swim down and they, they rise up and it's because they can't control the, the gas in their bladder to keep buoyancy. And this could just be overfeeding, that they're bloated, feed less, it could be caused by bacterial or some other sickness, they often develop it, old fish get it, you know, their old body is failing, it, it just happens or it can also be parasites. So if you have a case of swim bladder, I always feed less and less often and treat with an antibacterial such as Melifix to start. If that doesn't help, it's probably parasites. Go see your pet store. Now, you always wanna keep your quarantine tank on the opposite side of the room or in a completely different room from your healthy aquatic animals. Um, be careful not to splash water. Always treat, feed, clean your quarantine tanks last and wash very well. You don't want to transfer any any parasites or anything you may not be seeing yet from your quarantine tank into your healthy setups. Um, and again, also do not mix utensils. If you use a net for your quarantine tank, do not use that net for your healthy, for your healthy animals. Um, once you're done with the quarantine tank, if your fish was sick or your invertebrate was sick, it showed signs of illness, um, even if it wasn't, just rinse out the tank and everything that was in it with the hottest tap water you can stand. This helps kill bacteria. And then um, put it in a plastic bag or on a shelf by itself far away from the rest of your equipment and leave it sit there for two months. Most, most parasites and diseases, whether no matter what life stage it is in, cannot survive without being near a host for this, without having a host for two months or can, can't survive being dried out that long. So that's a good way to uh, make quarantine equipment safe again if you want to use it later in the future. Now on to how you do this. Uh, first of all, you're going to want to tank. This is a one gallon, a uh, half gallon tank from Walmart. It's got a draining spout that you can drain water for partial changes. I don't use it that. Here's its lid. It just sets on top. And I found that this size aquarium worked very, very well for me for keeping individual small shrimp, such as go shrimp and your cherry shrimp. Um, singularly, I had two of them and I kept one each one of these so they were kept separate all the space themselves there's no territorial problems no fighting over food nobody was getting hurt or cannibalized so it worked very well for me um pretty good for snails too snails shape of the container doesn't really matter they'll go anywhere um if you have a pet that is really good at escaping such as water beetles your boatmen and um, diving beetles, that sort of thing, you're going to want something with a secure lid. Something that actually snaps on or twists on because they're really good at getting out. Any pet that's good at getting out, you want something that's going to screw on or snap on. A basic Ziploc Tupper-made food storage container with some holes punched in the lid works very well. Uh, it's what a lot of people who keep aquatic beetles use. Uh, plastic cookie jars from Walmart or cereal containers where you just screw on the lid or snap on the lid work great. I use a plastic cookie jar container for my crickets right now. If you want to see the jar, see my climbing pet invertebrate video. That's what I use there. Also mason jars with uh, one or two holes or so punched into the lid such as with a wood punch or a metal punch. Um, really good knives can actually dig holes in them as well work very good too. Just make sure you have an appropriate size container. Um, don't worry about it being a little bit on the small side because quarantine tanks are all are best if they're a little bit smaller than what's considered the minimum for your pet because it's it's less room for your pet so they won't feel a uh, new pet may not feel overwhelmed by amount of space and it puts less distance between them and their food, which is really good, especially if it's uh, you're feeding live food that they gotta chase. <laughs> um, so, smaller's good. 
Now, I always keep my tanks bare bottom. I find this the best to keep your quarantine tanks bare bottom. I even keep a lot, kept my pet invertebrates in bare bottom tanks even after the quarantine period because you can just take a regular old turkey baster and just vacuum up all the leftover food and the feces and everything. Makes cleaning a breeze, doesn't take long, and it's very simple. Also, a lot of parasites and diseases spend half of their life cycle living in the gravel. So without the gravel, it may slow them down a bit because they'll actually be getting um, stirred up by the movement of water and as your pet moves over them. So, and also that way when you're siphoning, you could be siphoning up eggs from diseases, slowing down the spread of the disease. So I feel that bear bomb is really important. Now, usually I say I use disposable, really cheap items for your quarantine tank but you can't just cut down a soda bottle, bottle and pop it in there for an aquarium. Aquatic animals are much more sensitive to things that could be in plastics and stuff that aren't made for aquatic animals and much more sensitive to, to dyes and stuff. Somebody asked me if they could put silk plants from the craft section in an aquatic setup. No, 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 because plants that are in the craft section, they're being printed and made thinking they're just going to be made to use to make a bouquet or something. They were not made and dyed with the thought of this being put in the water. So you don't know if whatever the silk plants were dyed with is waterproof or not. So you could put it in there and dyes all the water green and be toxic because it wasn't made with the thought of being put in with aquatic animals. So stick with things for the most part that are for fish. Um, some really cheap things that you can buy in case you gotta throw it away if your pet is sick. One of my favorite things are clay pots. It's just a basic clay pot you get it at any garden center. Um, a lot of people have used these. This one's a little bit big for this tank because I bought it for my one gallons. But this one cost me 89 cents. So really, really cheap. Um, you can put it in a hole like this, but because it is round, it is the tendency to rock and slide in a bare bottom tank. So I suggest actually breaking it. Um, you can take a chisel and a hammer and that'll help you break it mostly perfectly in half. You can just smash it on the ground and pick up the shards and use shards for um, your smaller pet invertebrates like shrimp. I've seen a lot of people do that for shrimp and they love it. it, makes a great overhang place for them to hide under. And this will create uh, a hide to go in, hide under, and another climbing surface on the top of it. And the nice thing about the clay pots is if you've got a shard with a really sharp edge, you can just file it down to it's smooth with any metal um, nail file or metal wood file. Another thing that I found that works very well are little, little glass cups. This was 50 cents, found at a dollar store. It's just a miniature Coca-Cola glass like the ones you get um, from McDonald's. And again, you can break these, use shards, but the shards are really hard to file if they're sharp, even with a metal file. So I'd suggest using them whole. Can any glass, um, shot glasses are a really good size for something like this. So you can use that. You can also use plants. Some really cheap plants. These, you got, I got them in like a, it was like six or eight plants for a dollar thirty-nine or something like that. And these are just what they call fry plants or breeder plants. They're meant for, for like little shrimp and baby fish fry. You can take one of the glass like decorative stones and shove that in there to weight it down, which is what I prefer with these. Or you can just float them on the surface like that and um, shrimp. And beetles will actually hang upside down from them, but my shrimp preferred it if I weighted it down. Um, I also love using scraps off of old plants, and this was a plant that I loved. I love this aquatic plant, but it was really old, and all the branches just fell off of the base. Like, it wasn't worth even trying to melt them back into place or getting an aquarium glue to try and fix it because they all fell off. It was that old. And this still has the thing 
inside that maybe connect to the base. So um, I like saving these and rinsing them off and just sticking them in there. And I found this was really good for shrimp. My shrimp really liked it. And as you can see, it doesn't entirely float. The top floats, but the rest of it sinks and it sinks at an angle, creating a climbing space. If you put um, a lot of them in there to create together, like a little clump, it creates like a nice like little bush overcast, great for, for small invertebrates such as shrimp and for fish fry. This kind of setup is great for raising baby fish. Now for, for oxygen with invertebrates, it's much simpler. If you're using this kind of setup just on a larger scale for, for fish, um, depending on the oxygen needs of your fish, you're going to need a bubbler or an aerator and or a pump as well. Uh, a pump will actually churn, it churns the water, mixing oxygen in the water. So if you're using the pump, you don't need the aerator. Um, aerators are cheaper. I would suggest just buying extra tubing and for an aerator, just popping on um, some tubing, plugging it in, putting the tube in here for your, your aerator, let it bubble, you know, for your air. And then when you're done, with this quarantine setup, you can just cut off the tip that was, like I cut it really far up though, the tip that was in the water and actually touched any part of this. And then the part of the air tubing from the aerator that didn't touch any part of the tank can be reused in the future for another quarantine tank and still be safe. So I would suggest an aerator, you will need to do frequent, 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 like daily partial water changes and a lot of cleaning for many fish, if you're not risking getting some kind of disease in your pump to keep your levels down, your ammonia, nitrates, phos, not phosphorus, I'm sorry, pH and everything at the right levels that it doesn't kill your fish. But for pet invertebrates, they're much more durable. They don't have really high oxygen needs. So you can just get a live, cheap aquatic plant and just throw that in there preferably a floating plant, and just keep your tank somewhere where it's getting near a lamp, like your bedroom lamp where it's getting water, where it's getting light. Because as the plant photosynthesizes, it's going to release air bubbles into the tank. I prefer the plant Elodia for this setup because it goes through a growth and death cycle very quickly. It's not very picky about pH, ammonia, temperatures, anything. It's a floating plant and it's really, really cheap. So I would suggest I would suggest that you can also use duckweed, really cheap. Put that in there and it'll provide oxygen. Um, for your low intake fish, this could also what can also work very well, such as for quarries. Um, and just make sure though that you suction out with the feces daily any dead plant parts because it'll shoot the ammonia and the pH through the roof really quick as it dies. Um, and when you're done with these plants, if your pet wasn't sick, you can put them in your existing aquarium where you're sticking them, wherever you're sticking your pet. But um, otherwise, you're going to want to dispose of the plant if your pet was sick. Do not put them down the drain. Elodia and duckweed are invasive. They go really fast, can take over ponds, and actually destroy the ecosystem of ponds, shutting off light flow, killing algae, and then, you know, your invertebrates and then your fish, and cause a lot of harm to the environment. So live aquatic plants that need to be disposed of, scoop them up into a disposable coffee cup or picnic cup, set them somewhere to dry out, and then throw them in the trash can. Do not put them down a drain, flush them down the toilet, or anything, all right? If you have any questions regarding quarantining aquatic pet invertebrates or anything, just, just ask me, shoot me a comment, and I'll do my best to answer them, okay?